Hi there, we're going to find the limit of x cubed times e to the negative x squared as x goes to infinity using L'Hopital's rule. You might be able to tell from this graph of the function that our limit is going to turn out to be zero, but let's go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule just to be sure and to get some good practice. Now, to use L'Hopital's rule, we've got to make sure that our limit has an indeterminate form first, because that's when L'Hopital's rule applies. And to check that, we'll have to write our function as a fraction. In this case, that's not too difficult, because you may notice we've got e to a negative power. So, let's move that to the denominator in order to rewrite this in the form of a fraction. All right, so our function, x cubed times e to the negative x squared, that's the same as x cubed over e to the x squared. So now we'll check the limits of the numerator and denominator and be sure that this has an indeterminate form. Won't spend too much time on that because it's very straightforward. We're looking at the limit of x cubed as x goes to infinity, and it's easy to see that is infinity, just really, really big numbers. And then the limit of e to the x squared as x goes to infinity, that's just e to the power of really big numbers, which is gonna be a really big number. So the limit of the numerator is infinity, the limit of the denominator is infinity, and so indeed our limit has an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, and L'Hopital's rule applies. So let's go ahead and delete this to make some room and start using L'Hopital's rule. Just to try to make this easier to follow, I'll go ahead and give names to our numerator and denominator. So let's say our numerator is f of x, and that is x cubed. Let's say our denominator is g of x, which is e to the power of x squared. Now, L'Hopital's rule tells us, since this limit has an indeterminate form, it is equal to the limit of the quotient of the derivatives of these functions. So let's just go ahead and take the derivative of f and the derivative of g. The derivative of f, f prime, is a simple power rule. Derivative of x cubed will be 3x squared. And then the derivative of g, g prime, that's going to take a chain rule. We've got e to a power, e to some variable power, and the derivative of that is just e to that power. So we've got e to the x squared. But since that power is itself a function, we've got to use the chain rule. We've got to multiply by the derivative of that inside function, x squared. The derivative of x squared is just 2x, so we're multiplying this by 2x. And I'll rewrite that as 2x e to the x squared. That is g prime of x. Now we can evaluate our limit by looking at the limit of the quotient of these derivatives. Our limit is equal, by L'Hopital's rule, to the limit of the quotient of the derivatives. So that's 3x squared divided by 2x e to the x squared. 2x e to the x squared. Now, before you spend too much time trying to evaluate this limit and potentially applying L'Hopital's rule again, be sure to do any simplifications that you can do. Oftentimes, that's the key to evaluating the limit. In this case, there's a little bit we can do because we've got an x squared in the numerator and x in the denominator. So let's cancel out a factor of x. That's going to turn x squared into just x and get rid of the x in the denominator. So now we've got 3x over 2ex squared, and it doesn't take a genius to see that the limit of the numerator is still infinity, and the limit of the denominator is still infinity. So we will have to use L'Hopital's rule once again, because this is still an indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. My pen just had a little glitch there infinity over infinity. So we'll use L'Hopital's rule again. It's tempting now to write f double prime and take the derivative of 3x, but notice 3x, since we did that simplification, 
that's not f prime. So when we take 3x's derivative, that's not f double prime. Similar thing holds true for the denominator. Just a technical detail I figured I'd mention. Uh, so if we want to use some notation like this, we'll have to come up with two new function names. But, you know, we've got 26 letter alphabet. That won't be too difficult. Let's call 3x c of x. Why not? So c of x equals 3x. We're using L'Hopital's rules, so we got to take the derivative. So c prime of x, that's just going to be 3. Very nice. And then the denominator, we'll call that guy d of x. So d of x is equal to 2e to the x squared. And then we'll take the derivative of that, d prime of x. What will this be equal to? Well, when we're taking derivatives, we can just throw these constant factors out front and then deal with the rest. e to the x squared, we already took the derivative of that. That's just going to be e to the x squared and then multiply by the derivative of x squared because it's the chain rule. So you've got to multiply by 2x. And then this is equal to 4x e to the x squared. All right, we've got our derivatives, and we can go ahead to use L'Hopital's rule again. So since this limit had an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, we know it equals the limit of the quotient of the derivatives of its numerator and denominator. The derivative of the numerator is 3, so we'll put a 3 up there, and the derivative of the denominator is 4x e to the x squared. Now, there's not really any simplification we can do here, but that's fine because this is an easy limit. In the numerator, we have a constant value of 3, and in the denominator, we've got 4x e to the x squared. As x goes to infinity, that certainly goes to infinity. So we've got a constant over infinity. This limit, as expected, equals 0. And of course, this big string of equalities all started with the original limit we were actually interested in. So let's just write our big conclusion with that limit. The limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed times e to the negative x squared equals zero. And that is how you evaluate this limit using L'Hopital's rule. Feeling the stratosphere come